Today we're gonna to be looking at the best photo and video storage service to use with your mobile phone. And we're gonna be taking a look at all of the usual suspects, Google, Microsoft, and iCloud, but also some others including Amazon, iDrive, Flickr, and also a quick mention for Plex as well. And there'll also be links down below for all of those, including any discounts that I find along the way. And we're gonna be looking at pricing, storage sizes, features, such as the ability to hide your personal collection of adorable cat photos, any issues or limitations, and ultimately, which service I am going to be picking in 2020 to store my digital life. Firstly, a quick shout out to Synology, who are kindly sponsoring this video, more on them a little bit later. And for those of you who shoot far too many photos or videos and have run out of free storage space, stick around as we dive straight into the winner of last year's test, Google. Google won last year for their simple, fully featured and reliable service that also offered the ability to back up an unlimited amount of photos and videos if stored in their compressed format. But that has all changed this year as they no longer offer their unlimited backup service. So with Google, you now get 15 gig for free or you get up to two terabytes for 999 per month. Now there is a workaround that does get you unlimited storage still, but it's a bit tricky and involves signing up as a business customer, then upgrading to their Google Workspace Enterprise plan, 20 bucks per user per month, which in itself isn't bad for completely unlimited, you know, Google storage for photos, videos, and also their Google Drive kind of documents as well. And also all the other bits that comes with their Google Workspace service. In terms of the actual service itself, you can organize your photos manually into albums, or you can let their AI do its thing by grouping photos by what's in them like screenshots selfies location the faces in the photos and i do actually like how they've laid out the map view here as a, like a heat map to see which areas have had the most photos taken onto your prized cat photos now and beyond the both the manual albums and these like ai options on android you have the option to create a locked folder and anything that goes into that folder gets stored only on the device which then needs you to unlock the folder itself and also those items aren't backed up and they can't be shared which is great but that is obviously an issue if you switch devices. Now, if you don't want to lose them, or if you're an iPhone user, then the option isn't available. And the best you can do here is just to archive them instead, which means they basically end up amongst all of the other like, archived images, like screenshots, and basically all the other photos that Google will at times prompt you to move because it just thinks that you don't want them there anymore. But at least these are backed up and are shared across devices. You've also got options to create animations from burst photos, collages, and movies, which combine photos and videos for certain events. And you can access Google Photos from pretty much any type of device running any operating system anywhere in the world. And this means you can also share images with anybody, as well as using the built-in sharing features to share albums with anybody with an internet connection. Now, all in all, it's a really solid service for me, and it has been over the last year. It's been reliable. I've never had it get stuck with uploading or syncing. And with the option to upgrade to a business plan with unlimited space for more than just my photos and videos, it's actually a really compelling service. But don't stop there, because there are better things to come, I promise. Maybe Apple's own iCloud is one of those things. Okay, so Apple's own iCloud is definitely not the best photo and video service out there, but it is by far the best if you are using and only using an Apple device. Now it starts with five gig for free and up to two terabytes for 9.99. And I'd actually recommend that everyone with an iPad or iPhone at least uses the free service because it integrates with everything Apple, seamlessly syncing your photos and videos between devices and supports literally like every file format that you can shoot in their closed like Apple ecosystem, which is great if you're using an Apple device. However, if you want to to use any other service like Google Photos, for example, then I noticed a lot of apps will only show you the photo stores in the Apple Photos app and not let you select from you know, one of the third party apps, which then means this stupid process of opening said application, downloading it locally to your device, and then going back to the original application just to then upload that one that you've just saved locally. And all in all, it's a ball ache. It's something you shouldn't have to do and that's something that Apple should really resolve in their software. But putting my grievances aside, and similar to Google, you can create albums or view by face location or type and if you want to hide any photos in there there is a specific hidden menu option that moves everything into a hidden folder which you can then toggle on and off from the settings menu which is to be fair definitely a more secure way to hide your well Rick Astley obsessions from your missus now speaking of obsession let's take a look at the next guy who turns up pretty much every day on my doorstep Amazon As an Amazon Prime member, you get unlimited free deliveries throughout the year, but you also get unlimited photo storage. And this is actually a very good service. It is 
totally unlimited and it's probably free for anyone who has already got that Amazon Prime subscription. Or if you don't, then you can still get five gig for free when you sign up. But the unlimited service has a massive drawback for me. And that is because it's only unlimited for photos. For videos, it only includes five gig of storage. And so if you want to upgrade to more than that, then one terabyte will cost you about $7 per month, which is still semi-reasonable. If you consider that it's purely for video storage, since all your photos won't consume any of that additional one terabyte of space. But there are still some limitations. It doesn't support iOS burst photos, Google or Samsung motion photos for a start. And I found that it's not the fastest to sync your photos to the cloud either. That's not normally a problem if you're happy to wait for your photos to sync overnight. But for someone who wants the backup to be instantaneous before you know before the camera drops from their hand on a roller coaster or explodes on the desk in front of me kind of way it's still something to take into consideration if you do have amazon prime and you only take standard photos then this is a fantastic option that's basically free and because your photos are uploaded to amazon you can also browse them on fire sticks fire tvs and all the other amazon products too and even use your photos as screensavers if you do shoot anything outside of the included free space though then another option may be well worth looking at so next up, let me tell you about one option that normally has the keyboard warriors up in arms in the comment section. And that is, what about just backing up your photos yourself? Introducing Plex. Plex is one way that you can take total control of your own media destiny. And if you're worried about the cloud or what the cloud people are going to do to your crazy cat lady photos, then you can download Plex and use your own hard drive to store photos, store videos, music, and even other types of media on there too. Now, this means you can literally install Plex on your laptop and use its drive in there, or a desktop, and then keep adding hard drives to that too, or even a NAS drive, which can offer some redundancy in case you know a physical hard drive was to fail. And because you look after your own data, you can also manually move any other sensitive photos in a separate library or separate folder which then can't be accessed by anybody other than you and your user in Plex which can be protected by a pin code. Now for me Plex has been a little bit kind of hit and miss over the years the where I've been using it the photo upload itself just hasn't been that reliable. It has gotten stuck a few times on me and I do find myself having to load the app more often than I well, really should be to check that the photos and videos have actually uploaded. But if you can get it working then it is a great way to back up files of all types shapes and sizes and store them yourself in your own house so you don't need to worry about who has access to your data. Stick with me for just 30 seconds now and I've got something really, really awesome to give you because one thing you will have to deal with regardless of whether you're backing up to the cloud or in your own house is passwords. And Synology really, really genuinely surprised me here because whilst they are an excellent choice for all you need in terms of a NAS drive to store all your photos and videos, they can also help to secure and provide easy access to logins across your devices as well. Their C2 password service lets you automatically generate and securely store passwords across multiple devices, even with their free tier. Right now, there's support for Chrome and Edge, plus an iOS app, though Android support is coming later this year. Data is stored with end-to-end -end encryption, with zero knowledge, so only you have access to your data, and it starts at free, which is sufficient for most people, or £4.99 a year for their family plan of up to six users. There will, of course, be a link down in the description below if you want to check that out. And a huge thank you, of course, to Synology for sponsoring this portion of the video. So once you have grabbed your free password manager from Synology, another awesome thing is that we recently hit 35,000 subscribers on this channel. And to celebrate, I am doing a giveaway of this, an iPhone 13 Pro. It's the 256 gig model in graphite. And all you have to do to enter is to go down into the comments down below and tell me either what tech you are looking forward to buying this year or what cloud service you're looking at next. So you could answer an iPhone, an Android phone, maybe a password manager, maybe online backup, whatever it is, leave it in the comments down below. You don't need to be subscribed to win, but definitely watch out for the video, which I'll of course be posting on this channel when we do hit 50,000 subscribers to announce the winner of this iPhone 13 Pro. And this is a worldwide giveaway, so it doesn't matter where you are. Thank you for watching. And let's get back to the video and take a look at the insanely, insanely affordable iDrive. Okay, so iDrive are just gonna hands down win the cheapest backup service of the year right now. For 99 cents, 
for the whole year, you can get unlimited storage for photos and videos taken on your mobile device and up to one terabyte of data storage for either your Mac or your PC data. Now, even after that first year promotional price, it's still only $9.95 per year. Insanely cheap. The app itself isn't too bad either. And the upload does seem to work well, but there aren't any extra thrills and features like you get with the likes of, you know, Google or Apple, which will then sort through your photos and identify people or faces or places or similar photos to group them together. It doesn't do those kind of things, which to be fair, might be exactly what you're after, since why should Google or Apple or anyone be snooping through your photos anyway to read them? There are no ways to hide photos or videos in iDrive and sharing features are very limited in comparison to what we've tested elsewhere. But as a simple service that backs up all your photos, all your videos in the original quality and without any limitations and that ridiculously cheap price, I'd basically say that even if you use any of the other photo services recommended in this video, there's no reason why you wouldn't just pay 99 cents or even that, you know, the full price, 10 bucks per year for a second backup of literally every photo or video you've ever taken. And that includes motion photos too. It is just a no brainer to me. So I'll leave a link down below because in addition to unlimited photos and videos for 99 cents, they also have five terabytes of cloud backup for your Mac or PC for just $7.95 for the first year. And both of these services are pretty secure too. Some notable omissions so far, both Dropbox and Microsoft. And whilst they are both great services, I can only really really recommend them if you happen to already be using and paying for their cloud storage services. Now they are fantastic and particularly if you're already using them with Microsoft, for example, using the rest of the Office suite. But to me, they just don't offer anything above and beyond the other services that we've already touched on. Flickr, also a great photo sharing site for more geared towards photographers. But for most day-to-day -day, like mobile phone users, they have very limited support for file formats. And so if you're not a professional photographer wanting to share full-size JPEGs along with all the metadata around those shots, then you're probably best looking for an alternative option. Now, the question of course is, of all of these services, which should you use as a general mobile phone user who snaps loads of photos and videos in all the various formats as you go about your day. If you want a good service that's fully featured and backs up both photos and video, then either stick with Google or Apple. For a second backup, if you don't need the fancy features or if you just think they look expensive to you, then definitely get iDrive for that insanely low cost of 99 cents. And if you're already using Google or Microsoft or Dropbox, then it only makes sense just to stick with those. And if you only need to back up photos and have Amazon Prime already, then go with Amazon. So for me, for 2022, I'm gonna be using iCloud, Google Drive plus iDrive. And one thing that is worth doing before you sign up though, is think about what cloud storage service that you are using for other data. So for that decision, go and watch this video, which walks you through all of the options. And why not grab a password manager whilst you're at it by watching this one. Now sign up using the links down below in the description, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye-bye.